everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, didn't you? This one's 10 tips and tricks for creating better selections in Photoshop and cutting out anything. The title's going to be something like that. I don't know. But before we get going, remember, the best way to support and share this video is pound the like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future. And uh, buy my Photoshop course. That helps too. Link appeared right up there. 10 tips and tricks for creating better selections and cutting out anything in Photoshop. Let's go. All right, so here we are. Number one, uh, I like to, when I'm creating selections in Photoshop, I like to think of them as a sort of refinement process where we create sort of a rough and dirty and gunky selection and we sort of refine it and make it better and better and better and better and better. So here's the first step. Almost always I will use the quick selection tool. You could use a lasso tool, but check out the quick selection tool. With the quick selection tool, you just simply paint over the bits that you want to select. And you can see here we're like this really complex bunch of her hair hanging out over this uh, solid gray background. Come down here on her arm, her hand. She's got this great dress blouse situation happening here. And her shoulder slash face skin. And there we go. We've created this big selection uh, very quickly and it's a, it's a very simple selection. We created it very quickly with the quick selection tool, but it's also kind of a very, or a not so refined selection. You can see the edges of her hair are all kind of janky and wacky, um, and it's not quite what we want. Before we get into how to, how to really kind of clean up and select this hair, I want to talk a little bit more about the quick selection tool. Namely, uh, I like to keep auto enhance checked on. Uh, it tends to do a really nice job of helping to find that edge a bit more. Uh, and also, when you're using this, you can make your brush size bigger or smaller depending on where you need to select. But the, the really key hotkeys are holding down shift. That'll allow you to add to your selection or the alter option key and see the little plus in the middle of my, uh, my little cursor there. It switches to a minus. That is going to allow me to subtract from the selection. So if I were to zoom in and say like, well, I like all the selection, but I know I don't need to select this gray in here, I would grab my quick selection tool. We still have that whole area loaded as a selection. Hold down Alt or Option and just paint over the gray area in there. And you can see it just creates this sort of second selection within our original selection, right? You see that? That selection down there. But what that is is a hole cut in the middle of our selection. So Photoshop knows, all right, we're selecting all these bits around here, but not the little bit of gray in there and not all the gray out here. So it's a really great way to go in and be able to just add and subtract from your selection. If I see, uh, you know, up here on the finger, I need to add a little bit more of my selection. Great. If it didn't quite get to the edge of the shirt, I can just paint over that. If I want to come out on the hair a little bit further, I just paint out on the hair a little further and, you know, so on and so forth. Before we go on to the second little trick, I want to show you uh, something that's kind of important and really nice to know. I want to just grab that little loop-de-loop -loop of hair there. Under Select, you can save a selection, which means you can load it up and use it later. You can either come to the Select menu here, or you can simply right-click and choose Save Selection. When you choose to save a selection, I almost always give it a name. I'm just going to call this like Base uh, Select or something super, you know, I don't know, super blasé. And the operation is going to be to create a new channel. So I'm going to hit OK, and I can deselect this by going select, deselect, and over here in my channels panel, there's this base select uh, thing, and I can load this as a selection by command or control clicking on that mask, and voila, we have that selection again. Command or control D to deselect. Let's go on to number two, and number two is going to be using the Select and Mask tool. Now, if we go back to our channels and we Command or Control click on Base Select, load that as a selection, go back to our layers, we can go Select, Select, and Mask. Now, this is going to bring up this whole dialog box apparatus, and this is a tool that's very much in flux still. Adobe's doing a lot to try to make it better, uh, but it still leaves a bit to be desired as well. Um, it's not quite as perfect or great as it could be, but it does a really uh, decent job on... Uh, Subjects like this, where you have somebody over a solid color background, for the most part, it'll do a pretty decent job of helping you extract them. Now, there are a bunch of tools here that you can play with, but the really important tool that we're going to cover here is this one right here, the Refine Edge tool, uh, the Refine Edge Brush tool, I should say. Uh, now, we can use the left and right bracket keys to make this brush tool bigger or smaller. And what you want to do is, when I paint over an area, I want my brush to be about the size of the, the bit that is being painted over. So, like the edge of her hair in here, right, down in here where the hair is mixing with the gray background, a brush about that big, 100 pixels, is going to do a pretty good job of, you know, covering both the hair and the gray area. So I'm going to paint over that, and then I'm going to let go, 
and the refine edge brush should pretty much be able to say, all right, here are the bits that are hair, the bits that are the background, boom, I'm going to knock them out. It does a pretty good job. It's not at all perfect. It, you know, it's not the best selection in the world, but uh, much better than I could do with the lasso tool. I'll put it to you that way. Now, out here over these edges of the hair, I might want to make the brush just a tiny bit bigger. So we're selecting the entire range from like right here all the way out to over here. So when I paint over this and say, hey, Photoshop, clean up that edge, bring hair back in and drop that nasty, nasty gray background out, Photoshop will say, you know what? I can do that and I will do that. All right, so I'm going to paint over the hair here. I'm just going to knock out that background, bring this stuff back. You can see how it just, I mean, it does a, a, a really decent job, right? I mean, it certainly looks, it looks even better than it's going to, I should add, uh, because we're over sort of this transparent background. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to see exactly what the selection's doing. Up here in view, we can choose overlay and we can see, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a reasonably detailed selection, but you'll see it's, it's really not uh, as hundred thousand percent amazing as it looks here but it's still you know again better than we could do with the lasso tool i'll put it to you that way and you have some other things like edge detection sometimes boosting the radius a little bit will help get you a little bit of a better edge but it can also cause you some issues on on uh, some selections as well down here i'm going to choose to output this to a new layer with layer mask and i'm going to hit ok and you can see, of course, we have her up there on her own layer. There she is with a layer mask. Everything around her is transparent. And just as a quick test, let's throw a lighter colored background in behind her uh, in the form of a solid color fill layer. Uh, I'm going to go with, let's just go with like a, a really bright yellowish color. All right, I'm going to drag this below her. And we can see, I mean, the edges are, they're still kind of, fairly pretty torn up, but it's a really, really good selection. And we have a mask that we can play with and attempt to bring more detail out, or we could always go back into select and mask and refine the selection even more if we had to. Now, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, I'm selling a course over on tutfit.com all about how to retouch images. You are absolutely going to love it. If you pick up a copy, uh, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be able to download those videos. And most of all, it helps support tutvid.com and what we do here. Boom, use that link. Use that link. There's also a link down in the description. Buy the course, buy the course, buy the course. Um, and uh, keep watching this video because this video is free. So let's get back to 10 ways to cut anything out in Photoshop and create selections and all that good stuff. Now, if you are a Photoshop OG and you've been around since before Select a Mask was a thing, uh, at least in whoops, at least in the Photoshop CC 2017 version of Photoshop, if you absolutely hate Select and Mask, you can get Refine Edge once more. Let's bring up Channels. I'm going to Command or Control click on that Base Select uh, here under Layers. If you go Select, hold down the Shift key and Select the select and mask option. It's going to bring up the old refine edge command. And you can see there's our selection looks super rough, but we have this refine radius tool, which is very much like the refine radius uh, brush that we have now. I can bump up the edge radius a little bit. I could tick on smart radius if I wanted to mess around with it. Uh, I can use my left and right bracket keys to make my brush larger or smaller. And let's just try this here. I'll paint over uh, the hair down here. Let's see what we get. And I let go and all right, it does clean it up. We can try painting over up here. Let's see what we get here. Let go. All right, pretty pretty decent, right? It's pretty solid. And there's a lot of people that absolutely love this tool, especially as they rage against uh, Select and Mask. And I, I will not fault you one bit for raging against Select and Mask. It definitely has its shortcomings. Um, and this tool here, and we can paint over everything. You can see super fast, super easy. Uh, and then we can output it just like we did before as a new layer with layer mask. Hit OK. And we're going to have our layer here. Let's try dropping this over the yellow background. And you can see it does as good, if not maybe a better job, than the newer selected mask does. Still not perfect. Um, but, you know, we've got a very, very complex head of hair, very complex selection. And we've just popped it out. And it's editable, right? It's up here with a layer mask. I can shift click the layer mask. And it hides the layer mask. So all that information is still there to be worked with. Shift click the mask to re-enable the mask. Okay, let's take a quick break from this complex head of hair and jump over to this building on a hill image. So another great way to create selections in Photoshop and cut out items uh, that you may be looking to cut out is using the poly lasso tool. Now the polygonal lasso tool is located beneath the regular lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool right there. The great thing about this lasso is it just creates straight line selections. Um, the thing that you may grow to hate about this tool is uh, it sometimes accidentally creates selections that you don't want. So so like we can just create a selection here, pull along the foundation of this building, up this side wall, out around this roof, right? Just get all these details. 
But sometimes, see that, like, I accidentally clicked and it just created this. It, it closed off my selection before I was ready to be done with my selection. See, I've got this selection here and there's, like, a little area up there that's selected that I don't want selected. And everything else has a nice straight selection around it. But, you know, I don't have the rest of the building selected. So if this happens, what you can do, number one, I'm going to zoom in on this. I'll grab my lasso tool again and just hold down your shift key. And this is sort of the universal tool in Photoshop to add to selection. And I can just, once you hold down the shift key and start making the selection, you can let go of the shift key. And it's just going to, you know, use the polygonal lasso tool to add to this selection. I navigate to the edge of my, uh, my, my window there and it's going to move over so I can see my entire image. Great. What I'll do here is I'll just come up the side of the building. We're going to create, it's going to be a very rough selection here. We're going to kind of speed through this. And as we come here around the corner, we can just loop through our original selection, right? Something like this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I still, I just haven't let go of my, my polygonal lasso tool. And it's going to just remain active. And I can hold down, I can bring, you know, the point of my polygonal lasso tool somewhere around here. I know my, my selection started somewhere down here. Hold down the command or control key and click. And it'll join the edge of the selection. Now, I had actually begun the selection up there because I had to restart my selection again. I forgot about that. So I'm going to hold down shift and just drag a selection around this whole big area of the building that was not selected. And there we go. We've, we've created this selection of the building. I want to show you a quick trick here. Um, number one, you can, when you make a selection like this, you can just extract this item from the photo very quickly by copying it to a new layer using the hotkey command or control J. Boom. And you can see here, I grab the move tool. I now have a second copy of this church building. I just move it right up to its own layer and I could move it over here. I could use, you know, edit free transform. I could scale this church building way down and make a tiny little copy of the church right there on the hillside next to this original church. And then, you know, erase away or mask away some of the side to make it hide behind the tree. And boom, you got a second copy of the same building. Now, one of the other things I want to show you about the polygonal lasso tool is when you're creating any selection, let's say you accidentally created the selection. We actually wanted to create a triangle. So we need this to go from here to here and then straight back up and our whole selection is destroyed. So you would hit escape to cancel out the selection and make that, that, that shape again. Well, let's say you do that you don't have to actually get rid of the entire selection. If you create a point up here and you want to get rid of the last placed polygonal lasso tool point, just hit the delete or backspace key. And it sort of does one undo for you uh, as you're working with the polygonal lasso tool. That can be really helpful, save you a lot of time. If you're working around, sometimes the tool will glitch out and drop a point where you didn't want one. You can just hit the delete backspace key and boom, you get a nice selection with the polygonal lasso tool. So it's a nice little tool. Uh, it can be a little finicky to use, but the more you use it, the more you'll kind of understand the core of it and how it works and kind of why it even sort of has to work that way. Uh, but it's a, it's a super useful tool and definitely something you should know how to use, the polygonal lasso tool. And moving right along, no selection tutorial is complete without talking about the vaunted and feared, in some cases, pen tool. Over here, the pen tool, we can use it to create a path, not a shape, but we'll use it to create a path. And the nice thing about creating a path, we want to make sure it's set to combine shapes here, not subtract or anything else, combine shapes. If we create a, a selection around this car, well, using a path doesn't really create a selection. It simply creates a basis for a selection. So if I go ahead and uh, like select this front fender area, let's say, I can, I'll just go, I'll create a really rough selection here. I can go into here, I can click, I can drag, I can sort of create the selection. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. I can create the selection and pull. I'm just clicking and pulling. Hold down my Alt or Option key and just adjust that tangent handle there. Hold down my Alt or Option key, adjust that tangent handle there. Great, hold down my Alt or Option key and click that newest point to sort of suck the tangent handle back in so we can get a straight point right out of here. All right, we're creating a very rough selection, but the whole point is gonna be to show you one of the coolest things about working with the pen tool, that we don't really have to save our selection. The selection uh, the selection is automatically placed over in our, I'm just gonna follow the door line right back down, by the way. Um, the selection is automatically placed over in our paths panel. So the paths panel is located right here, and you can see we have work path. Now, this work path is not saved. If we start drawing another path, in all likelihood, this work path is gonna dis disappear. So we need to double click on the work path and name this door you know, part 01. Uh, I'm working on a car, by the way, because the pen tool is particularly useful if you're retouching cars because you can get such precise selections. And when you're doing something like, hey, the roof needs to be a certain color or the highlight on the roof needs to be retouched a 
certain way. Selecting manually the hard way, if you will, putting in the work, if you will, and using the pen tool to do that is just such an amazing way to get a great selection. But right now, this is not a selection. This is just a path. And by the way, if you're annoyed at looking at the path, go to your paths panel and just click out here in the gray and you'll deselect the path. But we're going to select that path. And to convert it to a selection, you can right-click and choose Make Selection, or you can use the hotkey Command Return, that's Control Enter on the PC. And now we have a selection. I can go back to Layers, I can throw like a Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer, and adjust the hue of that front panel of the car. And just like that, we have a pink front quarter panel of our car, front quarter panel and hood. And we created that selection using the Pen Tool. Now, one of the cool things about the Pen Tool is... Of course, the selection is saved, but we can also edit it later on down the road using the direct selection tool. So under the black arrow down here, the path selection tool, you can select the direct selection tool and click any part of your path. So I can click like, you know, right down here, select this point and I can click and drag the point and click and drag the tangent handle, move it up a little bit and move this, maybe move it over a little bit if I need to, or grab this, grab this tangent handle and adjust, adjust, adjust. I can move this point here. I can move it out a little bit and then adjust this a little more just to make the selection a little bit more perfect along the fender. I can select this anchor point and just, you, know, you can nudge and adjust and tweak things just that, that little tiny bit that they need to be adjusted to make everything just perfect. So that's the real amazing power of working with the pen tool uh, in Photoshop. You can always go in and tweak and adjust. Uh, you can add points using the pen tool or you can hover over your path. Well, I need to make sure I select my path, uh, but I can grab the pen tool and I can actually add points to a path that already exists. Uh, so I can hover over the the, uh, the path itself, add points. I can select, I can move those points. There's so much I can do with the pen tool and it's so precise with these tangent handles. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to look into how to use the pen tool and to learn how to master this pen tool because when it comes to creating selections, especially manual selections, the pen tool is the bomb. Now, it's a quick side note. The pen tool would be horrible for trying to select hair like this because of all these semi-opaque edges. The reason it's great with the car is because the car is solid. It's got sharp, defined edges. And when it comes to sharp, defined edges, solid, not see-through stuff, the pen tool is just – it's the beast in Photoshop for making those selections. And once you've got the selection, you've got it. It's saved in your paths panel. Huh, it's a beautiful thing. So now we're going to head back to this uh, image once more. I want to talk about the sixth thing, and that is using a channel to create a selection or using a channel to extract an object. If we come over here to our channels panel, you can see that we have, of course, the saved selection that we created. But outside of that saved selection, we have the three channels that make up this RGB image, the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel. We can use these channels, though, to create a selection. And when I look at these individual channels, I'm going to shut off red and green. I'm looking for a channel that gives me me maximum contrast between my subject and my background. This channel-based selection works particularly well when you have a subject that contrasts well against his or her or their background. Um, so here I can see the blue channel is really going to do good things for me. Green, uh, and we just want to turn the green channel by itself on. The green channel, as you can see, uh, she's lighter and the background's light. There's just not as much contrast as that blue channel. So what I want to do, I don't want to mess with the blue channel itself. If I edit the blue channel, I start to mess up the composite. RGB image, which is, you know, the image that we're looking at here in Photoshop. So I'm going to shut the composite RGB image off by shutting off red and green channels. And I just click on my blue channel, drag it down to the new channel icon, and I've got this blue copy. All right, I can turn my RGB channel back on, and you can see I've got this funky looking red overlay. That's because my blue channel is turned on, right? So this is just sort of Photoshop's quick mask way of telling you, hey, look, the red stuff's not going to be selected. Stuff that isn't red is going to be selected, which doesn't mean much because it's a super complex selection, um, so don't worry if you don't quite understand. But one of the cool things about these channel-based selections is we can apply stuff like a levels adjustment to this channel. Go image modes, uh, modes, image adjustments, levels, and we could say, hey, drag this white point over because we know we want out here to be solid white, and we really, in the end, want her to be solid black. If she's solid black and the background is solid white, we're going to get a pretty good selection. So let's go solid white. Let's pump up the black. It's going to make her nice and dark. I'm going to pull the midpoint over a bit. Something like that. I'm going to pump the whites a little bit more. All right, we're going to hit OK. Now you can see the highlights in her hair are really beginning to come out. So at this point, what I would do is I would take my brush tool and make sure it's set to the blend mode of normal, opacity, and flow both at 100%. Uh, right click. I probably want to go with a really hard edge brush, 100% hardness. I'm painting with black, and it really helps to have a tablet for something like this. We can go in and just paint over all the stuff that should be black. Get as close to the edges as you can. Again, we're going to perfect the hair edges here in a second, but all the stuff in the middle, there's no reason – 
why we can't just go in and paint uh, with the color black and say, you know what, we know that we want all of this to be covered up and to be a solid color. We're just kind of helping Photoshop, uh, helping Photoshop out a little bit by painting all this stuff in. We can get all the way up kind of close to the edge of her hair, right, because we can do all this manually by hand. Get up close to the edge of the hair. There we go. Uh, we can come here into her hands a little bit, but we really got to be careful to stay away from the edge too, too much because we'll really start to mess stuff up. All right, great. Uh, at this point, we could hit Command or Control L to open up levels again. We could boost black a little bit more, boost white a little bit more. We want to be really careful, though. I'm going to zoom in on my image. We want to kind of try to maintain some of the semi-transparent grayness of the edges of our hair because that's going to just – it's just going to look a bit better. So just keep that in mind as you're doing this. You don't want to lose kind of the semi-transparent nature of hair because frizzy hair is by its very nature uh, a little see-through. So once you kind of have this uh, selection made, what we're ready to do is invert the selection because with a channel, the white is the stuff that gets selected and black doesn't. So all we need to do is hit Command or Control I and we're going to flip this. Well, as soon as we flip it, we can see we have a lot of light gray down here. We still need to work on her hand a bit and we need to make sure everything up here is pretty close to solid black. Check out this really cool trick. You can go to the brush blend mode and set it to the blend mode of soft light. And when we do that, I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to give it a nice soft edge as well. We can paint in here with black and you can see when we paint over the white part of the image, the, the black doesn't spill out over that because with the brush set to the blend mode of soft light, uh, Photoshop is just saying, look, I'm going to attack pixels that are already black or dark gray and just make them blacker or more dark gray. So the same goes if we set white as our foreground color, we can kind of dab the edges of the hair a little bit. We can go in there and you can see it's just going to fill out the edges of the hair without kind of getting in there and polluting the black background, right? And, uh, here with her hand, we can really clean up the hand that we were having trouble with by just painting over it with a few passes using uh, a soft light blend mode brush. Her knuckles are still a little bit black, but what we can do is we can go in now that we've kind of created the edge, right? We're establishing that edge. That's the most important thing. We're establishing the edge. And you're going to see this is this is an older way to make selections in Photoshop, but it can really be useful at times. We're going to go back, set this to the blend mode of normal, and I'm going to paint over these areas that are that are kind of left behind that are you know, solid or yeah, still solid black. We're gonna come here close to the edge, and you know, you can spend as much time as you want refining this channel. And because it's a channel, it is going to be a saved selection, right? I can zoom out here, and if I turn on my RGB composite channel, you're gonna see everything around her is kind of red. She's in full living color because she is exactly what we're going to select if we load that blue copy channel as a selection. Let's select the RGB composite channel. This is gonna make sure we're working on the right uh, image. We'll go to our channels here. We can Command or Control click on the blue copy channel. Go. Back Back to layers and we can just throw a layer mask onto this layer so go layer layer mask reveal selection and you can see it knocks out the background and we get a pretty darn good selection of her hair let's drag the solid color layer down here be underneath her and you'll see it's it, you know it's pretty good it's it's almost as good as refine edge and select a mask um nowhere near perfect uh down in here could use a little help out here it's a little too crunchy maybe uh but you know the more you create these channel based selections the more oh, i'm gonna hit cancel i don't want to do that uh the more you're gonna get better and better and better at creating these selections so yeah check that out three different ways to extract the complex head of hair we've covered just in this one single tutorial what are you kidding me all right check this out this is actually really cool we're gonna come over here to this ferris wheel image uh this may be a way of creating a selection that you've never heard of or never thought of before. This is particularly useful with an object like this, where it's super complex, um, a lot of straight lines, very contrasting over a relatively solid color background, a set of power lines, something with, I mean, there's just tons of little girders and pieces of metal here in this Ferris wheel. We can go image calculations and what calculations is going to do is it allows us to take two channels and blend them together. So what we can do, we'll do the same thing. We're looking for contrast between our foreground object and the background. Um, and then we choose a blending mode with which we, we blend them together. So I can go with like green channel and green channel and blend them using multiply. Uh, so multiply is going to basically take the darkest pixels and just really pile them on. And the Ferris wheel is nice and white here, but the sky is not nearly as dark as when we use the red channel. Let's go blue, blue. Eh, I don't really like that either. Uh, and there's these add and subtract options as well, which can be uh, really helpful. But in this case, they, they're more helpful when you're blending channels for hair, I find. Um, although if we set this to an offset, I believe it would be of zero. Or no, let me go back to 128. Let me try just inverting one of these channels. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's not really going to – it's not going to give us what we want here. Let's just go with two red channels. Let's go with both red channels. I'm not going to invert either one of them. 
and we're gonna set the blending mode to either multiply or even we can try color burn. Look at that, look at the sky, almost solid black and the Ferris wheel almost entirely solid white. We just spent all that time using levels, remember to make our girl solid white. Well, calculations is going to do it in one click. Oh, well, a little experimentation, but one click. And I'm going to say, look, the result of this calculation will be a new channel. Hit OK. What do we have? We have an effect on our image. The reason our layer is red is because over here in the channels layer, we have a new alpha channel that's selected. If I turn my RGB uh, layer back on, you can see we haven't messed anything up. Make sure I select my composite layer. You can see it's a regular old image. We haven't messed anything up. We've created this new channel, though. And look at this. Solid white, solid black. We can open up levels if we want. Command or Control L and boost the white a little bit more if we think it needs that uh, to really get the full oomph of the selection. And maybe I'll do something like that. And then I can hit OK. And what we can do is we can command or control click on this alpha one channel, or we can go select load selection and choose channel alpha one. And the operation is going to be yes to create a new selection. Hit OK. And we've got this really complex selection. And let's just use that hot key we learned before. Let's select our RGB uh, composite channel or yeah, up there at the top. So we're back working on our image. We'll use that hot key we used before command or control J to pop the Ferris wheel up onto its own layer. And you can see we've extracted this white Ferris wheel from the background. Now, a couple of obvious problems are the darker areas, the top bits of each Ferris wheel car are kind of not there. Well, not kind of not there. They straight up aren't there, but that's very easy to go in and paint that stuff back, uh, you know, later on if you need or add to that selection. Uh, you know, well, if we're not popping this up onto its own layer, right, if we're instead creating a layer mask, you can always go in and paint with the color white and just get all that stuff back. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to pop this up onto its own layer and we're going to leave it up there. We'll come back to this image at the end of the tutorial. I think I'll, I'll probably show you, yeah, one last tip uh, when it comes to creating these selections. So let's move on to number eight. And number eight is also really cool. Uh, I'm going to deselect that path. I don't want to see the path. Uh, th creating a selection and extracting an object based upon its color uh, or even just the tonality of it. Go select color range. Well, actually I actually have to click color range. There we go. And what we can do is under selected colors, we can choose something like, hey, select the yellows in this image. And you can see this yellow stripe here. And sure enough, we can see white. Look at that super white there across the front. Hit OK. And we've got that yellow stripe selected and very, very tiny bits of the yellow in the walls back here. Um, and we can't even see the selection. They're so faint. They're not even showing up with these marching ants. But we can see the marching ants down here around the stripe in the road. Commander Control D to deselect. Let's select the obvious thing here, the car. So we'll go select color range. We could try selecting the reds and you can see, yeah, it's going to pick up most of the car and a lot of the, well, not really a lot, but bits of the building behind it as well. Or we could choose sampled colors. Now also note, you can straight up select highlights, mid-tone shadows, and even Photoshop will do an okay-ish job of selecting skin tones in general. If you choose skin tones, let's uh, just choose sampled colors here. We can use our eyedropper and let's, uh, let's just select the front quarter panel of the car. You can hold down shift and select multiple colors of red and then use the fuzziness slider to sort of increase or decrease the amount of um the amount of reach this has, kind of the, the liberality with which Photoshop is looking for these reds. So I'm going to go fuzziness of about 148. That looks pretty good. You don't really know until you start messing with the selection just how good or bad it is. So let's select this by hitting OK. And you can see it loads this pretty complex selection. It even grabbed the red in that sign on the wall and some red up here in the, the base of these ledges. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer and just try shifting the hue of the car. And you can see... We can just shift the hue of the car. There we go. It's a pink car now. Maybe make it a darker car by reducing the brightness or pump up the uh, saturation a little bit. Whatever you want to do. You can do all kinds of stuff. And you can very quickly make selections this way. And of course, with this selection, you could just pop these colors up onto their own layer. I'm going to command or control click that layer, uh, that layer mask, I should say. Hide the layer. Select my background layer. And uh, hit Command or Control J. And we just pop all of that red stuff up onto its own layer. Just, you know, can be a really neat effect depending on if you're working on some kind of design where you want to extract a color like this. Um, you know, options, options, options. It's always great to have options. Uh, and color range is a really, really cool way to select. Um, difficult to select areas very quickly, like this car. You can see it's way faster than selecting with the pen tool. But it's also, if I alter option click on the mask, we can see it's also way less precise than the pen tool. Now, in the case of this uh, car, we can probably kind of get away with it. If this is our photo and we want to change the color of the car, no big deal. It takes, whatever, 20 seconds. It's really easy with color range. 
Now moving on to the ninth option, I'm going to come down here to this uh, image. This one's really cool. I love this way of creating selections really quickly and it very aptly is named the quick selection tool. It's right down here at the bottom of the tools panel. It's this little icon here. Before we even use it though, double click on it and you get quick mask options. I like to set this to color indicates selected areas. And the reason I do that is because this way when I'm painting, the areas I'm painting, those are the areas that are actually going to be selected. And a color of red is great. You can choose any color you like. Red is the default in Photoshop, so I, I tend to stick with that. That's fine. Hit OK. And we've got our brush, very soft edge brush. I'm going to use my right bracket key to make the brush quite a bit bigger. And I want to create a selection over this little river area at, at the bottom of these waterfalls. So I'm just going to paint with black. My foreground color is set to black, but you can see as I paint, I'm getting this red overlay. Remember, that's the color we set. I've got very soft edges, so I can quickly paint over this river. And what's going to happen here, if I'm just going to paint like out to there, it doesn't need to be perfect for the sake of this tutorial. The nice thing about this is you can very quickly select areas that may be kind of difficult that, that you don't need a super precise selection of, uh, but maybe I want to just change the color, generally speaking, of the water in here. And using a soft edge brush means my selection is going to naturally feather out at the edges. It's not going to be in a, a very hard stop. It's going to fade itself back into the image. To, to convert this to a selection, hit the letter Q. Q, by the way, gets you in and out of quick mask mode. So hitting the letter Q converts our painting to a selection. You can see we've got marching ants. We could add something like, I don't know, let's go with a color balance adjustment layer here and pump more cyan and more blue into our water. Or maybe not more blue, maybe more yellow. We want this water to be more sort of greenish, cyan colored. Uh, and that's... Uh, that's exactly what we can do. So you can see there's before, there's after. And we can go in. It looks very natural, right? You would never know. It's a very quick, easy way to create selections that are relatively complex, but you don't need it to be so exact that you have every little nook and cranny along the shoreline uh, picked up exactly. Using quick selection, such a fast and easy way to create those types of selections. So the 10th thing here in this tutorial when it comes to creating selections and cutting anything out in Photoshop is kind of the stuff we've been covering all along. What do I do once I have a selection? Well, remember, we talked about once you have your selection, you could save that selection. And it's going to do what? Well, it's going to save it as a channel. You can, as we did over here in this uh, image, when you create a selection around the building, you could pop it up onto its own layer using Command or Control J. Then you can grab your move tool and you can move that object around. You've cut it out. You can move it. You can treat, uh, transform it here, edit, free transform. You can move it around, scale it, size it, do whatever you want with it. You can also, as we did over here in the Ferris wheel, uh, example and with calculations when we load that selection by command or control clicking on that uh, on that channel we can select our image and just by hitting the new mask icon you convert that selection to a layer mask which is you know incredibly useful all right let's just undo that command or control d to deselect and there's really so much more you can do like we talked about there in the quick selection you can just use that uh, you, know, you create that selection and when you create an adjustment layer it takes your selection and automatically converts it to a mask so the adjustment layer is sort of wrapped and contained within that selection that you created and it's you know so fast and so easy so now the last thing I want to talk about sort of the uh, this will be the bonus tips this is number 11 I know the tutorial said only 10 things let's go for 11 here uh, defringing so once you've created and cut something out uh, this can be really really nice and really useful let's delete our color balance layer here let's grab one of our blonde girls let's grab the one on top here and I'm going to I'm going to grab her and drag her over to this landscape photo and drop her in place so you can see the hair it's got some light haloing around the edges right you can see how the edges do not look nearly as perfect as they should they look really nice considering the image and the complexity of the edge um, let's just alter option click on our mask here see we've got all this white out here this is just because because we're dragging from this portrait orientation uh, this image that's more portrait orientation I should say to an image that's landscape orientation I alter option clicked on the mask to bring up the black white alpha channel view mode I am going to use my rectangular marquee tool to create selections hold down shift to add to that selection create those two selections go edit fill and I'm going to fill them with black. Hit OK. Just so we have a nice uniform mask. Command or Control D to deselect. Alt or Option and click to get out of that view mode. Now what we can do is something, uh, this method of defringing is called decontaminate color. Now really, really quickly, if we go back to select and mask here, we did have an option when we outputted to the new layer with layer mask to turn on decontaminate colors. Now I've found that decontaminate color is really, really hit or miss. So I don't always like to use it. I'm going to hit cancel. Uh, I'm going to show you another way to use decontaminate color. Uh, you can do it by going layer, matting, and matting's not active for us. Why? Because we have the layer mask selected. We want to make sure we have the layer selected. Let's go layer, matting, color, decontaminate. 
Now you can see we get the slider that pops up, and this allows us to have more sort of heads up control over how much decontamination there is. No decontamination, we have all of this kind of you know gray haloing. The more we decontaminate the color, the more it kind of gives us this faded color, which it still doesn't look perfect, but it does look a whole heck of a lot better than it did. And sometimes you can find a sweet spot where it just looks right. See, at 100%, it's doing too much damage. Um, but back here around 65, 70, that's probably the happy zone of, you know, it's not the greatest selection that we could have made, but this helps the edges just a little bit more. Now, one last thing over here in the Ferris wheel image, we pop that Ferris wheel up onto its own layer. Uh, let's add just, I don't know, a solid color layer here beneath it just so we can see what happens. Bright red, fine, great. All right, let's look at all the edges of the Ferris wheel. They really don't look too bad, but we can make them even better. So just select that layer, and this goes for any graphic you've cut out, anything like that. You can again go layer matting, defringe, and let's just defringe this, I don't know, one, maybe two pixels. I'll go one pixel, hit OK. And you're gonna see, as you said, it was very subtle. Look at those edges. See how it just like helps bring back the edges. It helps defringe and get rid of any little color edges that are on those edges that just like little tiny bit of black that's left behind or a little tiny bit of white that's left behind, especially when you're doing something like this that has a lot of straight edges. Um, maybe you're cutting web graphics from one you know website out of something into another website into something and you have a little fringe of some color left. Defringing works so amazingly well. And by the way, uh, remove black and white mat also work really well for getting rid of just a little black edge or a little white edge that are left behind on your graphics as well. And just generally that stuff can be super, uh, super duper useful. Man, it feels like we've been all over the place with this video. Uh, that's 10, no, 11, count them, 11, including the bonus little trick there at the end. Ways to cut things out in Photoshop. That should help you cut out anything in Photoshop, from a complex head of hair to a car to something like this Ferris wheel that has tons of little sprockety pieces going every which way. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like on the video, as I mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, also, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video. Comment on the video as well if you feel so inclined. Let me know what your favorite trick was, or if you have a great selection trick. That's Always great to hear from you guys and have you dropping some knowledge in the comments section as well. So for 10, no, 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 11 different ways to cut out and make your selections better and better and better in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.